Hi, thanks for joining me in another video. So you might be wondering, why do you have so many adapters? Do I need all of these? No, you don't. As an EV reviewer, I've collected these over the years to test them out. For most people, you'll likely only need one or two of these to handle all of your charging needs. Today, I'm going to take you through what I call the EV charging adapter saga. The need for charging adapters dates back to the early days of EVs, notably with the GM EV1 in the 90s. At the time, electric vehicle technology was still in its infancy and there were no widely agreed upon standards for charging infrastructure in North America. This led to a patchwork of connectors and charging systems with each automaker and region adapting their own approach. As more EVs hit the market in the 2000s and 2010s, adapters became necessary for drivers to bridge the gap between these incompatible systems, whether it was to connect Teslas to public charging stations using the J1772 or adapt between different fast charging standards like Chatamo and CCS. Fortunately, the industry has since made great strides towards standardization, particularly with CCS and NAX. Though it seems as one adapter is no longer needed, another one arises. I'm hopeful that the reliance on multiple adapters will decrease, making charging simpler and more seamless for all EV owners. First up, we've got the J1772 to Tesla adapter. This one's a classic. If you've ever charged at a public charging station that uses the J1772 standard, this little guy is your bridge to connect your Tesla to any modern level 2 charger out there. It's lightweight and easy to use. Just line it up, click it into place, and then plug in. This adapter comes with your Tesla and you can purchase one new from the Tesla shop. I use this often and more than likely it will stick around for a long time for level two charging. This adapter is the exact opposite of the previous, converting a Tesla connection into a J connection. It's a third party adapter which I use to charge non-Tesla electric vehicles on level two Tesla chargers. This adapter and others like it are not designed for fast charging, so they won't work at superchargers. When I have cars to review, I can charge them up on my Tesla wall charger at home. Makes my charging convenient and cheap. Speaking of third-party adapters, if you're ever in the market for one, whatever the connector, be careful what you buy. There are a lot of third-party adapters that aren't safe and can cause damage to your car or charger. Always look to see if your vehicle manufacturer sells one or look for a trusted and verified alternative. If your household owns a Tesla vehicle and one from another brand, you can always get the Tesla Universal Wall Connector, which has one of these adapters built in, so you can charge any EV off of it. This is the Chatamo to Tesla adapter. Chatamo used to be more common, especially in earlier EV days, and is still widely used in Japan. This adapter is used in current EVgo stations to provide NAX compatibility. They haven't added an actual NAX cable yet, but it's basically this adapter with a long cable attached. This adapter is super bulky and heavy. Now imagine plugging it in and carrying the weight with the cable. Okay, let's plug in the Chatamo. This thing itself is sort of so heavy. Oh my goodness, I have to... Okay, there's the click. All right, then we plug it in. Oh my gosh, I'm afraid this thing is just gonna break. All right. How convenient. <laughs> Oh man. Oh my gosh. Literally. <laughs> I don't like that. They don't sell it brand new anymore in the Tesla shop in the US. To buy it here, you'd have to get it used. That said, Tesla's supercharging network and CCS are far more common now, so it's becoming more of a niche product. Plus, Nissan Leafs would be pretty upset if you're taking up their chargers. Speaking of CCS, here's a one you'll probably recognize or already have if you own a Tesla. This is the CCS to NAX adapter and it's useful for Tesla vehicles to plug into CCS DC fast charging stations like Electrify America. Make sure you watch my CCS retrofit video to learn about older Teslas using this adapter. If you don't plan on using a CCS cable, then you don't need to purchase this. I personally like this one as a backup for long trips. Some areas of the country have more CCS stalls, so it's cheap insurance not to run out of charge on a road trip. I'm missing an important one, the NAX to CCS adapter. This one is new and still being rolled out today. It's for non-Tesla vehicles that want to charge on Tesla superchargers. 
You can already see a similar adapter on superchargers that feature Magic Docks. Same basic concept, but you can't take this adapter home with you. The Magic Dock will have to stay behind. Many manufacturers have said they would be adding NACs on their new cars. Hyundai announced that the Ionic 5 will be coming out with NACs directly on the car for 2025 models. We can hope for more in the near future. For now, owners can use this adapter to charge on Tesla superchargers. This one's a bit unique and for sure the oldest, the Avcon Tenema 1450 adapter. This one is for legacy charging setups that predate modern standards. It's been a nice piece of history to have in my collection. Avcon was the original design of the J1772 connector and eventually got modern J1772 signaling. This adapter was originally used to allow GM EV1 owners to adapt Avcon to MagnaCharge. It was also used by some original Tesla Roadster customers at a time when Avcon was more popular than the J connector or Roadster chargers. I had a little fun and I tried it out with my Tesla mobile connector a while back. If you want to learn more about this adapter, check out my Avcon adventure video. Lastly, it's not exactly an adapter, but the Tesla mobile charger comes in handy when I travel to an Airbnb or a family member's house. These smaller plugs allow you to utilize many standard NEMA outlets. I have a choice to plug into 120 volt or 240 volt outlets. You can buy these directly from the Tesla shop and work great for daily use, not just for when you're on the go. So that's a look at my collection of charging adapters, a little history of how far we've come and a glimpse of where we're headed. Like I said, you don't need all of these adapters, especially not the AFCON. The good news is that there is movement in the charging infrastructure as new vehicles will be getting the NAC standard and third-party DC fast chargers will be getting the NAC's plugs soon. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our Kaya sticker shop. Kai is my dog. And follow us on social media at Kaya's EV. That's all for now and happy charging.